Welcome to the Navigating Your Life show. Tonight's show topic is, I want to change, but I don't know how. We're gonna spend some time talking with some life coaches who are gonna give us some advice on how to make that journey to change. But before we get started, we're gonna spend some time visiting with Dutch Springs, a place where people go when they want to change, primarily as teams, but also as individuals. So let's watch what happened when we visited with them. Jason, thank you so much for having us. So we're here today with uh, Jason Schwartzran, and you're the director of the North Star Adventure here at Dutch Springs in Bethlehem. Um, the show's focus is about, I want to change, but I don't know how. And we understand uh, this location has some ways that you can begin that process of discovery. So tell us what you do here. Absolutely. What we do here is we do facilitated team building. Mm. And so what we do is we group people together in small groups of people, and we take them through different activities according to goals that they set for the day. Certain goals that people work on are communication, mm. trust building, increasing the synergy in a group. Mm. And so what we do is we use non-traditional methods and we use these life-size activities that you see all around you in order to get them to realize for themselves a new way of thinking. Wow. And Jason, what have been some of the results that you've seen that have come out of people participating in this adventure? After each program, the results are pretty similar. People have found a new way of thinking. A lot of people say, that they found a way of thinking outside of the box. Um, in our programs, we teach people to find that box and burn it. And so the results of our program really get people to think alternatively mm -hmm. about how they can work better with one another it only helps them as well sure. as, as people. And describe to us some of the activities that go on as part of the, uh, the, the day's events. Well, we have an activity right over there. Mm -hmm. It is called the spider's web. Mm. And the spider's web has uh, 14 holes total and the group starts on one side and their goal is to get to the other side. Mm -hmm. But they have to choose which hole that each person wants to use. If they all decide to take all seven of the bottom holes and there's people left over, then it's impossible to do it. And we stop the activity and we talk about failure mm -hmm. and how the group can learn to fail forward. Mm -hmm. And then unlike in real life, we give them a do-over. Okay, all right, and some other activities. I have an activity over your other shoulder. It's called Operation North Star. It serves as both our advertising sign as well as an, uh, an activity. And the whole group is given a very long pole and they have to start at the tail and the end for North Star and finish at the R mm -hmm. in star without touching the sides. Hmm. And if they touch the sides, it's just like the game operation. They have to start completely over at the wow. beginning. And just uh, think about different groups. Let's say if there was uh, an office team, it seems like this is a, a rather made for kind of place for that. But what if you were just a family or just a, a social group or others? Is this the kind of place that if they wanted to discover more about themselves and others that that would be appropriate to visit and to spend some time? Oh, absolutely. Every group of people needs to learn how to better communicate with one another. Mm -hmm. And trust is always an issue with almost any group of people. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you hear from people is, oh, you know, that team building stuff, that kumbaya stuff. But I would think that you would, you would say that we see so many things on television and in the newspaper where communication has gone bad. And reality is, in retrospect, I think people would have loved to have been part of that kumbaya stuff rather than some of the other stuff that they're, they're, they're having to contend with because things went bad. Absolutely. We, you know, my profession gets all of the bad, the negative effects of TV and mm -hmm. the, uh, the different initiations or hazing that mm -hmm. certain companies and groups put mm -hmm. people through. Uh, but what we tell people is when they come here is I can promise you we're not going to hold hands and we're not going to be singing. Okay. Um, but at the end of the day, they will have smiles on their face That's because important. of all that they've accomplished. Yeah. What are some of the kinds of things that you encourage people to let some of this stuff go? Because they may have been sent here by their company as opposed to volunteering. So how do you disarm some of the people that come with some very strong armor? We start every program almost the same way. We start with very benign games as most people see them. And as myself as a trained facilitator, I know exactly when I've broken through those people with the tough outer shell. Mm. Usually they come and they stand in a circle like this and then slowly over time their hands drop and their facial features tell me that, all right, I'll listen, I'll see what I can do. And usually those are the people who get the most out of the day. Wow, that's wonderful. What is some advice that you can give people who are at that, you know, um, at that border and wanting to make the crossover, what could you suggest to them about making some of these needed changes that they feel uh, that they need to make in their life? The first thing is people really have to want to change. Mm -hmm. It can't be an external force of 
a family member wanting them to change. Mm. And once they make the decision to change, then they have to set a goal for themselves. Um, if the goal is they want to be more outspoken, then in their everyday life, on their drive to work, they have to say, I'm going to be outspoken once today mm -hmm. and make the goals really incremental so that when they're accomplished, the celebration of success is that much better and that much bigger each and every day mm -hmm. until eventually they have accomplished their goal. Wow. So take one step at a time. That would be my advice. We want to thank Dutch Springs for allowing us to visit with them. We're now going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have those life coaches that I talked about earlier. So please stay with us. Do you have a community event or a special person you'd love to spread the word about? How does reaching a potential audience of 2 million viewers sound? Announce a conference, festival, fundraiser, special event, or even nominate someone in your community who's making a difference. Send us the information to include in our weekly community spotlight to the email listed below before space runs out. All events must take place between mid-September and mid-December. Ready for some fun? FunWorks assists individuals with and without disabilities to participate in community activities. These activities are provided in small settings for one to eight individuals with at least one to two direct support professionals. We visit places like Dollywood, Willow Valley Inn, Phillies Games, Iron Pigs Games, the Lehigh Valley Zoo, and more. Let us know your dream trip. Our staff is dedicated to ensuring your dream activities come true. For more information, call 888-966-9466 or visit funworksinc.org. You choose your doctor. You choose your pharmacy. Why shouldn't you choose your in-home health care provider? The good news is you can and you should. When your hospital or doctor prescribes home care, Alan Lear Home Care Associates will work with you in the comfort of your own home, providing a full range of services. Our nurses are dedicated professionals that take the time to get to know you and help you return to your optimal health. Call Alan Lear Home Care Associates. Caring for you when you need us most. At Bridge to Creative Learning and Child Care Center, your child will learn and play the creative way in a safe and secure environment. We offer a fun and caring educational-based atmosphere and allow parents to monitor their child's activities. We are a state-licensed child care center offering academic preparation, after-school programs, creative learning, summer activities, and much more. Call us at 610-351-7400. Prepare your child for a brighter future. Welcome back to the Navigating Your Life show. We have with us two wellness experts. We have Sarah Kochner, who's a certified professional coach, as well as Susan Lorraine, who's a holistic practitioner. So welcome, Susan and Sarah. Thank, Thank you. you. Good. So could you tell us what a coach who's working on improving your life and your wellness, what, it, what is the reason, why would someone have one? And why don't we pose that to you first, Susan? There are many reasons. Uh, some individuals are trying to recreate themselves mm -hmm. in the career atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Other individuals uh, may have had the loss of a loved one and they are trying to move forward. Sure. And they have a need for the coaching and the healing aspect mm -hmm. so that they may be more clear and be able to move forward. Okay, and um, Sarah, what are some of the things that you work with a person on who's making a journey of change? Um, we work with people on focus on clarity. Mm -hmm. um, we help people really try to find their inner purpose and passion mm -hmm. and to connect that inner purpose and passion with outer goals and objectives. Okay. Now, where did this kind of work come from? Is this something new or has this been going on for a long period of time where people have been going to others for expertise? So, uh, Sarah, do you want to take sure, that? Sure, sure. Um, I think it's really evolved um, out of a few different modalities. Mm -hmm. It um, is often compared to therapy. However, therapists often take their clients from dysfunctional to functional, mm -hmm. whereas um, what I do, I take people from functional to optimal. Mm -hmm. And it's very forward moving. A lot of times therapy kind of focuses on the past. Mm -hmm. And with what we do is that we, we help the client move forward. Mm -hmm. We help the client really focus on what they want out of their life and then achieve the goals to get there. True. And is your work, uh, uh, Susan, similar where you're taking someone from uh, uh, where they want to be into a higher level? That is true. We start with the level of healing first, mm -hmm. seven-week healing program, which takes you through the steps of healing. Mm -hmm. There are four steps of healing, and we go through all of those elements what are those of, four steps of healing? awareness is number one, okay. two, acknowledgement of where you are, mm -hmm. uh, looking at your situation mm -hmm. and without judgment, helping you to release 
whatever that inner dialogue is that is keeping you from moving mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. And then we go on to the next step of <clears throat> releasing any anger, any fear, any resentment. And then we go into the last step where we're rejuvenating, refreshing transformation. And how does a person give themselves permission to make this transformation, this journey? Um, and I'll pose that to you, Sarah. I, I can just imagine uh, for a lot of people, it's tough to say, first of all, that I have a challenge. Right. And then second of all, um, that I'm going to do something about it and I'm going to give myself permission to be human and to be frail. Absolutely. Well, I think a lot of that is uh, tapping into truly what you do want out of life mm -hmm. and realizing we have this one opportunity um, to create the life we want mm -hmm. and to really examine your beliefs and what you think about change. And once you can really embrace and say, you know, change is okay, change is a part of life. Mm -hmm. And life is change and transformation and growth. Mm -hmm. And so once you can embrace that, most successful people can then look at it and say, I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna do what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Whether I fail or, or not, life is a journey and I'm gonna embrace that journey. Wow. And, and Susan, where have you seen that courage come from to make that step? That is very interesting how interlocking both of our work is. Sure. Because as I'm working the healing workshop, many individuals, yes, they do need encouragement and they need to develop that inner courage, that inner strength. Mm -hmm. And what I help them to do is understand the inner core of who they are mm -hmm. and then take them step by step and help them to build. Both of you have talked about that, uh, that inner core yes. uh, coming out of the, per, you know, into the person. You, why is that? something that you both feel is something that needs to be worked on? Are you, is that because you find a lot of people that don't well, know who they are? Well, from a holistic perspective, we look at mind, body, spirit. Mm -hmm. We look at the interaction of why we are actually here. What is our purpose? And my program allows you to, as you go through the healing cycle, <coughs> to recognize and become more aware of who you are. It brings you more in touch with your path, your purpose, so, but, but because you're strengthening. Let me just interrupt you there. When you say who you are, what do you mean by that? Like I, I know who I am, but you're saying who I am in a deeper kind of way. What in a deeper way, meaning that you know we all have a creator that brought us here. Mm -hmm. We have a purpose that no one else can fill. Mm. And we have a reason for being here that no one else has. We have unique gifts that no one else could take the place of. Mm. So in this particular cycle from a holistic perspective, we want to strengthen the spiritual core of the individual mm -hmm. because that is what allows you to really understand who you were meant, who you are and who you're meant to be. Wow. Sarah, what are your thoughts about that? Um, I think that a lot of times life experiences, roles that we play mm -hmm. can, um, put layers upon us, mm -hmm. so to speak, like the, the little wooden Russian doll, sure. the doll within the doll within sure. the doll. And sometimes it's important to peel away uh, maybe negative experiences we've had or mm -hmm. maybe a parent saying you should be a doctor instead of this. Mm -hmm. and, and peel that away and connect with the core because really at your core is your consciousness, the awareness of, of who you are and how aware you are of how authentic you're being. Mm -hmm. And that awareness will lead to your emotions, and those emotions lead to your thoughts, and those thoughts lead to your behaviors. Mm -hmm. And if you want sustainable change, then you really need to, to look at how um, you're viewing your world at the core. Good. And well, just let's hold it there. Sure. As we talk about peeling, we need to peel away to a commercial. Sure. Uh, so when we come back, we'll continue this conversation about making yourself better. So please stay with us. Explore Dr. Nat Williams' Absolutes of Success book series featuring The Navigator of Life, The Mature 64, Living Life 8x8, Management and Leadership by the Three Ps, The Affordability Factor, The Four C's of Change, Embracing Your Real Life, and the Absolutes of Success series workbook, Maximizing Your Greatest Potential to Achieve Your Personal Best. All books available at drnatwilliams.com or amazon.com. At Bridge to Creative Learning and Child Care Center, 
Your child will learn and play the creative way in a safe and secure environment. We offer a fun and caring educational-based atmosphere and allow parents to monitor their child's activities. We are a state-licensed child care center offering academic preparation, after-school programs, creative learning, summer activities, and much more. Call us at 610-351-7400. Prepare your child for a brighter future. It's about changing the world in which we live. It's about playing, living, and working together. It's about escaping from special programs. It's about finding leadership. And social justice. The Pennsylvania Developmental Disabilities Council believes that disability is a natural part of the human condition. We are working to create a commonwealth where all people thrive in shared citizenship. And everybody wins. Enrich your life at Sacred Heart Villa, situated atop Mount St. Michael on 40 plus scenic acres. Our caring staff includes missionary sisters and on-site licensed nurses 24-7. We offer medical reminders as well as dispensing medication and transportation to medical appointments. With excellent food, fun events, a spacious hall, safe rooms, and much more, your life will be enriched. Call 610-929-5751 or go to sacredheartvilla-readingpa.org. Well, welcome back. We're with our wellness experts of Susan Lorraine and Sarah Kochner, uh, and they're leading our conversation on ways to make yourself uh, a better person. As we were talking off camera, um, I wrote a book a while back called The Affordability Factor, which basically talks about a challenging life event that I believe everybody has. And so often because that event is so powerful and sometimes uh, overwhelming, we find ourselves stuck in that moment for a long period of time. And I heard both of you talk similarly about that, about an event or, or a situation that really throws us for a loop. And overcoming that is a real challenge. So I'd like to hear your thoughts further on overcoming some of those uh, events in our lives that's been difficult. So why don't we start with you first, Sarah. What are your thoughts sure. about that? Um, I think it's important to um, be aware of certain events that have happened mm -hmm. and to realize the imprint that an event like that can happen. True. And often, you know, there's a deep imprint and so you need to, um, or it would behoove you to relearn or re kind of set the neural path works that have happened mm -hmm. in your brain and it takes practice. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if you have a very deep, I, I kind of uh, connect to the ocean, you have a deep imprint and it takes a few times for the, sure. you know, the ocean water and that's what you have to do. You have to practice um, a new way of thinking and behaving when there's been an event that has stressed your body mm -hmm. um, and really caused a trauma. Sure, wow. Very interesting because trauma for many people can mean different things sure. depending on what they've been through. It brings me to a point of a client I had at one point who could not conceive for seven years, her and her husband. And when she came to me, she said all the testing showed that it was impossible and it could never be. Mm. So we went through the healing cycle and within three weeks, she did conceive. Mm. The reason why she could not conceive was because she basically shut herself, her whole reproductive system down. Mm. She had a serious trauma many years prior when she was very young. She was in a position where she felt she failed a loved one. So in her mind, she told herself, which went down to the cellular level, the deepest level of her minds, mm. I'm not worthy of a child. I have no right to have a child. And once we uncovered this thought pattern within her and released it, she began to heal, she began to let go, and she conceived. And you both had talked about the language that we use in talking your to ourselves. Your words are your wand. Say that again, please. Your words are your wand. Energy follows thought. So for an example, if you say to yourself, every time I go to the mailbox, I have bills. What you're doing is you're putting that energy out there okay, and so you keep getting bills. So if I have a different thought about what's in the mailbox, it's going to change those bills into being Dep party invitations? Depends on, <laughs> <laughs> depends on the phrasing that you're using sure. or the pattern of thinking that you have sure. about that because issue. Because the truth be known, there's always going to be bills in there, but there's other things in there as well. But if you concentrate on the thing that's a burden to you, and keep talking about that as w uh, in addition to the other things that are there, it gives you a very tunnel view. And there is a way of resetting that dialogue sure. to turn that around. Sure. And, and um, Sarah, how do you reset that dialogue? One of the things I, I'm sure people are sitting ho at home watching this and saying, this sounds so wonderful, I want to start singing Kumbaya and, <laughs> and uh, you know, putting on the incense, but how do you really make the changes? You know, t life is tough for a lot of people. 
they you are know, dealing with challenges with their home, they're dealing with right. challenges with their job, their challenges with their children, caring for parents. It's very complicated. But how do you take the time to make yourself better? Well, I think um, exactly kind of what you said is taking the time okay. and saying, r figuring out why you want to change and why it is important for you. Because really finding out why you want to do something um, fuels the desire to actually change it. Mm -hmm. And I have to say to people, you know, write down all the reasons you want the change. Mm -hmm. Carry it in your wallet. Put it on sure. your bathroom mirror. It's because a commitment. Right. Wow. And you forget, you life gets hard and you fall back into old patterns. So if you have the constant reminder and, you know, a confidant, a friend who can sure. remind you that this is what you really want for yourself. Mm. And again, it takes practice. And, and not only practice, but also um, getting within yourself to, to feel the difference. Because sometimes it's a little uncomfortable. Mm. And that coordinates with the awareness level. Sure. You're coming right. into the awareness of learning and knowing and acknowledging who you are. Sure. And then, of course, you are, it allows you to uh, get that new dialogue into position. Sure. I do a great deal of re-dialoguing mm -hmm. with clients. And, and it is amazing how their situations turn around. Mm -hmm. And it's part of becoming, I guess, more transparent. I think a yes. lot of us are hiding from ourselves and hiding from others. Yes. And by putting it in writing and talking to other people, yes. you become, uh, you start making yourself more transparent and understandable to others. Right. And wow. thinking about what attributes you need to become the person that you want to sure. become. What do they, what would that person possess? What does success look like? Right. Yeah. For you. Right. And so, and starting to act upon that. Um, you might not feel disciplined, but what would a disciplined person do? Sure. You might not feel um, like you have a certain power for something, but if I were powerful, what would I do? Sure. And it opens up a whole new world of possibilities mm -hmm. and, and choice and the power of choice to say, I could do what I did before or I can take this new path mm -hmm. and it's going to get me to where I want to go. Wow. And that brings you into the uh, awareness of knowing what your divine path is sure. because we all have one. Sure, wonderful. We're going to get ready to wrap up, but I want to give you both a chance to share any closing thoughts with our viewers. So why don't we start with you first, Susan, any thoughts you'd like to share? All I would like to say is anyone can heal. It does not matter where you've been. It does not matter who you are. Whatever you need to do in your life, wherever you would like to go, you can get there. Anyone can heal. Well, good. Thanks for sharing that, Susan. And Sarah, your closing thoughts? Um, you know, I, I agree with everything you just said. And sometimes I think it helps to think about who we are, really are innately as people. And if you just look at infants, they didn't say, oh, I fell down one time, so I'm not going to walk anymore. Mm. They got up, and they stumbled, mm. and they got up, and then finally they walked. Because it was just a part of life. It was a part of their journey. It was something they were meant to do. Mm -hmm. And they took the attitude of, this is my journey. I'm going to fail, I'm going to succeed until I reach my goal. Wow. And they reach their goal. Wow. Failure wasn't an option. Exactly. Wow. Well, Sarah and Susan, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank and you. offering your insights. Thank you. Very good. We're now going to go to commercial break. When we come back, we're going to wrap up today's show. So please stay with us. It's about changing the world in which we live. It's about playing, living, and working together. It's about escaping from special programs. It's about finding leadership and social justice. The Pennsylvania Developmental Disabilities Council believes that disability is a natural part of the human condition. We are working to create a commonwealth where all people thrive in shared citizenship. And everybody wins. Do you have a community event or a special person you'd love to spread the word about? How does reaching a potential audience of two million viewers sound? Announce a conference, festival, fundraiser, special event, or even nominate someone in your community who's making a difference. Send us the information to include in our weekly community spotlight to the email listed below before space runs out. All events must take place between mid-September and mid-December. Explore Dr. Nat Williams' Absolutes of Success book series featuring The Navigator of Life, The Mature 64, Living Life 8x8, Management and Leadership by the Three P's. The Affordability Factor, the Four C's of Change, Embracing Your Real Life, and the Absolutes of Success Series Workbook, Maximizing Your Greatest Potential to Achieve Your Personal Best. All books available at drnatwilliams.com or amazon.com. The Banana Factory is Lehigh Valley's premier community cultural arts center, promoting and sharing visual arts with everyone. This outreach educational center features a clay studio where students learn the art of ceramics with some of the region's most renowned artists. The Lehigh Valley's only hot glass studio promoting the art of glass blowing and the glass making process. 
the Olympus Digital Imaging Center, where students learn the art of digital photography and much more. Come experience the world of art at the Banana Factory. Call 610-332-1300. Kachaj, age 10, is friendly and mild-mannered and soft-spoken. He delights in pleasing others and shows great appreciation and excitement for things big or small that others do for him. He loves to watch television and play video games. Kachaj is in the fourth grade. His teachers say he works very hard and is quite a perfectionist. Kajir is seven and is affectionate and takes great joy in giving and getting hugs. He is very energetic and inquisitive about the world around him. His favorite activities include watching cartoons and playing video games. Kajir can struggle with adapting to change and requires patience and redirection. However, once he becomes accustomed to a situation, he warms up and displays his outgoing personalities. The brother's greatest wish is for a family that will welcome them both into their home. For adoption information, please access the National Adoption Center's website at adopt.org. And for further information on both of these brothers, please contact A. Cressman at adopt.org. Well, we hope tonight's show has been informative to you. We know the desire to change is difficult to garner, and again, to maintain it is even tougher. We hope our guests have provided you with information that will be useful on your journey to change. Next week's show, we're going to be traveling to Camden, New Jersey, to spend some time looking at what's going on with the urban youth there. So we hope that you're able to join us. Till then, be well. Thanks for watching. A list of resources related to today's show is available on our website, which is navigatingyourlifeshow.com. On this site, there is a connection to our Facebook and Twitter pages and to our blog. While you are there, you can also email your comments on today's show or share ideas for future shows.